Okay, I'm, I'm off from work this week. That's why I'm making a video at 11.09 on a Tuesday. You know, my, okay, drinking my morning coffee still. Black Rifle Hazelnut. Just ordered some. There's a sale on Black Rifle. I want to talk about a guy named Mohammed Anwar. Now, when you think of Muslim, you think of terrorist. Okay? Truth. There are so many Muslim terrorists in the world. You know, you look at 9 11, all sort of bullshit. You look at the terrorist attack at the, the supermarket there two weeks ago, and the terrorists killed 10 people from the cop. Um, you look at Al Qaeda, ISIS, you look at all the fighting that's been going on by the United States in the Middle East and Africa since I was in a diaper. But not every Muslim is a terrorist. I went to high school with a few moderate Muslims, they do exist. We don't think about them that often they are there. Um, we have moderate Muslims that fight in the military. Several police departments, including NYPD, have Muslims that go undercover into mosques to make sure that there's no terrorist activity going on. Um, Jessica Lynch owes her life to a Muslim. Marcus Attrell owes his life to a Muslim. Dakota Meyer owes his life to a Muslim. And I saw a video of Marcus Attrell, with the, the chieftain that saved his life. He's now in America. And Marcus hugged him and called him brother. And you can tell Marcus is very, very emotional. And a six foot five, 250 pound guy doesn't get emotional very often. And of course, if you ever read the, uh, the, um, uh, the American series, the third book is American alias Johnny Walker. No, codename Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker was a Muslim who worked primarily with Navy SEALs and was friends with Chris Kyle. Even though Chris Kyle mostly worked as his Navy SEAL attached to the Marine Corps, this guy knew Chris Kyle personally. And he came to fruition, prominence rather, because Chris Kyle was showing pictures and someone said, who's that? You know, you got a six or four Muslim guy with a fucking AR in his hand. What the fuck is he doing there? And Chris Kyle said, that's Johnny Walker. That's his code name, obviously. Okay. He saved more lives than I do. Okay. Now let me tell you something right now. Okay. I have saved my own share of lives. I think the guess now is between 16 and 21, roughly. You are a real badass, genuine badass. When Chris Kyle says, you saved more lives than I did, okay? That, that's, that's an endorsement right there. Now, this gentleman was working for Uber Eats. Now, Uber is the, the cab company where people use their own personal car as a cab service. Uber and Lyft, L-Y-F-T, the two again. Okay, I first heard of Uber Eats because I had some junior high school kids a couple years ago waiting for the buddy to go off the bus. They asked me what the address was, and I'm like, I, I go by the intersection corner. This corner, that corner, intersection name, okay? They called, got some food delivered. What the fuck is that? That's Uber Eats, okay? Some places deliver food, like pizzerias and stuff. Places that do not deliver food, McDonald's, Dunkin' Donuts, a really nice restaurant. You can call Uber Eats, and they can go and pick the food and bring it to you. They can bring it to your store, your office. They can bring it to the street corner. You could be in a playground, okay? And you can say, give me Uber Eats, and they'll bring the food to the playground because you're watching your little brother and sister, whatever, okay? Or your babysitting, whatever, they'll do that for you. I would not call Uber Eats for a pizzeria because pizzeria has their own delivery guy, you know, and something him. But this guy, Mohammed Omar, he worked for Uber, as an Uber Eats guy. They do regular Uber, I don't know, maybe. And he worked in DC, which is, I would guess, a pretty good spot for that kind of stuff because you've got tourists that can just get the app on the phone and call. You've got other workers that might not be able to get out, like a tour guide. You might have a tour guide waiting from between tours, and he says, like, oh, I got this much time between tours. I can't go out somewhere. Maybe I can have the guy come to me. Okay, yes. okay. there's a lot of people, military installations. To, well, I wouldn't think that the uh, guys, the, the two million ones, certainly be getting Uber, Uber Eats, but there's soldiers walking around D.C. Okay, there's people that, there's people that you could 
generally find business with. And he was in DC doing Uber Eats, making man's living. He wasn't an illegal immigrant. He wasn't a terrorist. Okay, he was just an Arabic, an Arabic immigrant guy. Okay. He wasn't on welfare. He wasn't you know, depleting the system, okay? He wasn't answering to the far left like these other fucking guys do. Okay, he's trying to make an honest living. And you had a 13 year old girl and a 15 year old girl that carjacked him with a taser. And there's a video for this video footage that a guy took on his personal cell phone cam, where the device was. And he's on the passenger side of the car, the door's closed, the windows rolled up, and they're fighting over the car. I've heard a lot of people say if you're a carjack, give it up. Maybe you should. But I'm not gonna blame the victim. He didn't want to give the car up. And trust me when I tell you, a lot of Arabic guys, okay, they don't like complying in robberies. They just don't. Uh, you've heard stories of guys at Arab guys at gas stations, Arab guys at convenience stores, liquor stores, okay, you, a guy comes in and robs him, and they're willing to buy with 10 bucks, okay? It's the mentality they have. They don't want to lose their stuff, okay? This is the way it is, okay? This is the way it is, okay? And he's resist resisting. Someone in the fight, someone hits the gas. The car goes jolting down the road. It forces another car up the road, goes over the WL line, goes flying down, flips over, he's killed. There are several people around there, including guys in uniforms, military uniforms, that are helping the girls to safety, and the guy with the camera's running down the road saying, they're carjackers, they're carjackers, whatever. One of the little bitches yells out, my phone's still in the car. Okay, now, first and foremost, Parents, you need to beat your children. Okay, beating children is legal and it's necessary. Okay, parents need to start beating their children. Okay, your children need to be beaten and often it's good for them. Now, this bitch was so detached from reality, she literally just murdered a man on, on camera and oh my god, my phone. Okay. Now, it's very, very difficult to get a concealed carry in DC and a lot of these major cities like New York City, stuff like that. Very difficult to get a concealed carry. Very difficult. You gotta, you gotta know somebody, basically. Or do a backdoor bribe, basically. You know, throwing a lot of money to the widow's pension fund and some shit. It's very hard to get a concealed carry. Okay, you go to New York City, everyone can still carry as a celebrity. Also, even if you do have a gun in the car, I would not want to use it because using a gun in the car, even if it's a 22, even if it's a BB gun, the blast in that confined space is going to really knock you the fuck out. You could probably lose consciousness, okay? If you got like, let's say you got a Smith & Wesson J-frame air weight, Magnum, okay, and you fire that in the car from a distance of you know five inches away. A Magnum bullet being fired out of a gun with a two inch barrel in a condensed space like a car, okay, the sound is gonna knock you out. You are literally gonna pass out from the sound, okay. Depending on what state you live in, there are alternatives. This was a gift, it's cool baton. I can break glass with this, I can poke eyes with this. This is a K-Bar TDI Karambit. This is the infamous Benchmade rescue tool that I used to save a man's life one time. Heart attack, didn't jump in the car. If I was where the guy was, videotaping as the fight's going on with the window closed, I would have taken this 
or the uh, Kubaton, the little black stick there. And I would have put this through the window, hard. As this goes through the window, the glass falls down. The sound will take her off guard completely. Keep in mind, she's going to fall, I'll get it later. She is distracted by the victim she's robbing. She's not prepared for the window to be smashed really hard. I would have then reached into the car, grabbed her by the hair, and I would have pulled her hair. I'm 190 pounds. I would have taken her hair, and I would have leaned back entirely with my weight. And that would have snapped her neck back and possibly dis disabled her. Now, what if she dies? I'm responding to an armed robbery, carjack. Carjacking is a federal crime. I'm responding to a federal crime. Okay. Now, if I had gone, if I had arrived at the scene after maybe I was running on the block or whatever, and I saw the car do that jettison, and I saw it flip, I would have taken the girls down as they came with the car because the car is sideways. I would have taken the girls down and I would have thrown them head first onto the concrete. Okay? Because now I have now I have murder suspects in custody. Okay? Parents need to start beating the shit out of their children, period. Okay? And when parents don't beat their kids, we need to fight back. Okay, I would never condone doing this to a shoplifter. I worked in a supermarket when I was much younger and I did break a guy's ribs. He was a robber, he robbed them. Um, uh, I'm dating myself here. He robbed disposable cameras. The story that caught him in the doorway, the, the hallway when you walk out of the supermarket, the, the passageway. He tried to punch the security guard in the face. Security guard picked him up by his hand. As I came around the corner from outside, he went like that. Security guard stopped his wrist and broke it. I knelt down on his rib cage. I'm a little bit lighter than what I'm, I'm, I'm like 195 now. At the time, I was maybe 170, 180. And I broke all ribs here. Okay. The only reason why we got violent was because when he took the swing, he escalated himself into a robbery. Okay, robbery is a felony. Now, shoplifter, okay, if you got a 13 year old kid putting a candy bar in their pocket and you're grabbing their hair, punching their head, body to them, you're gonna get charged yourself. But when you got a violent felony robbery, you know, armed robbery, carjacking, federal crime, you gotta defend yourself. You gotta defend others too. Okay, if I had been at the scene, I would have got violent. And I would have said, I'm defending the guy. The guy's being caught, and I'm defending him. And a lot of people are saying they're just kids. Okay, did they kill your father? Did they kill your husband? Was that your friend? See, I don't even know a lot about this guy. I don't know about his family. I don't know about his friend. I don't know about his wife. They have a wife. They have kids. I don't know about that stuff. Because the media didn't tell me to care about it, okay? I saw it a couple of times mentioned in the news here and there casually, and then Tucker Carlson talked about it last night on Fox. Okay, this is a murder caught on camera. Now, the George Floyd killing was wrong. He was face down on the ground, hands behind his back. He should have went to jail alive. The guy put the knee on his neck, used excessive force, ended up killing him. Other B side of the story is George Floyd was gonna die anyway with a drug overdose, and George Floyd was a career criminal. This is an honest guy earning a living, killed by two, two little punk bitches. Here's the problem he is a legal immigrant. He is a legal immigrant who was working for money. He didn't come here legally, he's not on welfare. The girls, are underage and they are black. That's the point. Thank you, goodbye.